Wave energy has an edge over other low carbon sources of power, such as the sun and wind, for a number of reasons. For a start, the resource is massive if you think the oceans cover about two thirds of the world's surface. Secondly, it's a little bit more predictable than other forms of low carbon power, which is hugely advantageous to utilities and energy suppliers. And thirdly, the devices are often found underneath the surface of the water, so there is very little visual impact, and you don't get that with, for example, wind turbines. Mm -hmm. So governments across the world have picked up on this potential and many have put in place various pricing mechanisms and very attractive incentive regimes to spare investment into the industry. And so Louise, are there many other companies apart from Enel that are actually active in this wave energy? Yes, there are a number of big utilities which are either investing directly in the sector or forming partnerships with technology providers, EDF and Fortum for example. SSE, which is the UK's second largest energy supplier, has invested in a company called Aquamarine, which makes oyster-like devices. Mm -hmm. And then Palamis, which makes snake-like devices that bob on the surface of the ocean, mm -hmm. is backed by Eon, Vattenfall and Scottish Power, which is a unit of the Spanish utility Iberdrola. Uh, we were looking at some of the pictures there, some mm -hmm. of these I implants, I guess you call them. How difficult is it for these projects to, to come to life? As you can imagine, installing a device uh, in an offshore remote location comes with a, a suite of different challenges. For a start, making a device that is capable of withstanding the harsh saltwater conditions and also the hostile weather patterns that you get in these offshore locations. Uh, these devices also have to be able to remain fixed to the seabed during stormy conditions and also maintaining them is very difficult. As you can imagine, this can only happen during good weather windows. So addressing all of these issues and also being able to transmit the power from the offshore location to centres of energy demand is extremely challenging. It is challenging and so do we have any, when do we expect them to actually produce a meaningful amount of power? It's still very early days for the industry. Uh, for example, the project that Enel is working on with 40 South Energy is just a single unit device and that will be capable of producing power for about 80 homes. However, as developers move towards producing multiple devices and testing multiple devices, pooling data and tweaking their technologies, the cost should start to come down, but that's still many years away.